This has got to be the world's smallest pocket watch. It looks to be about Victorian time. Uh, there's a chain on the bail here. It's um, winding with the crown. The hands are fairly fancy. Um, it's got a very clean face, which is nice. Uh, the, the watch did, did not come at all with a, uh, a glass uh, domed uh, lens here at all. So it's, it's, um, it's, it came off, I imagine. Compared to a size 16 pocket watch, this is what you're looking at. And the 16s are not the largest pocket watches, the 18s are. So this is very, very small. It's smaller than your average wrist watch. There's a wrist watch and there's this pocket watch side by side. So as you can see, it doesn't even take up half the area of a wrist watch. So it's a very, very small pocket watch. Um, its setting mechanism is on the top here. There's a small button right there. Let me just get a screwdriver here. There's a small button right here that you depress to set the time. And you do that with one hand while you turn the crown with the other hand as, as like this, like so. Um, again, the crystal is missing off this watch. So it, uh, I said lens earlier, but I, I have the morning stupidness uh, thing happening here. So, but this is, um, <clears throat> the crystal's missing from the watch. It's a very, very small crystal. I tried to find one. I don't have one this size. Um, if I look at the back of the watch, it's uh, fairly highly decorated, the cases. Um, and it looks like it's got, you know, flowers, flowers in the case. Um, other than that, there's no, no place on the case to write someone's name or a gift or something like that. And also the edges of the watch are decorated. Um, I just open this up like so, and we've got... What we have here is a dust cover. Um, we have a dust cover here. And then we have um, the cover. And on the inside, and there's, there is a small marking on the inside that you can just barely see there. Um, I'll, look I'll see if I can look that up or get some advice from other uh, pocket watch enthusiasts on what this might be. And then opening up the back here to have a look at the movement. Uh, very European looking movement. Definitely, I don't believe, North American. Uh, it's got a uh, balance without, without the uh, balance screws, so there's not a, no adjustment that you could make with the uh, weight of the balance. So poising of the balance is not possible with this watch. It has, I'm trying not to make the face touch the uh, mat here, although it's pretty, it's a, it's a good mat. Um, <clears throat> it's got... Um, the winding mechanisms come through here and the mainspring is under the plate here. And then you have a center wheel with no jewel on it. And as you go down the, the, uh, the train here, you've got a jewel on the third wheel, a jewel on the fourth wheel. Um, the escapement is underneath, is actually underneath the, uh, the, balance, the balance bridge here. And there's a screw to take the escapement off as well. Uh, and then a fairly simple uh, regulator arm that's provided as well. A simple, very simple push left, push right regulator arm to regulate the watch. So nothing super fancy about the movement. Very, very small movement. Uh, it could be a little bit tricky to, uh, to uh, work on here. I haven't worked on a lot of these in the past, but I have worked on a few. If I recall correctly, there's a screw right here that will be should be used to actually remove the uh, the stem and then remove the the watch from its case. Um, so I'm going to have a look at this uh, pocket watch and uh, disassemble the pocket watch, and then um, see if I can uh, clean that and reassemble it and see if I get this thing working again. So let's get on with the task of disassembling the uh, pocket watch. So as I've done before many times, uh, the first job is to remove the hands and to protect the uh, 
the face or the dial. Um, put a piece of plastic over there and be very careful about how I how I move these hands off. They should come right up, which they do. And, and I'm going to actually use a piece of Rotico to to uh, remove the hands so I don't bend them or pick them up poorly with the uh, with the tweezers. As I've said a million times, you got to move everything out of the way. So today the Masters is playing, so I can use my golf voice to do this work. So there we go. And I got to also pay attention to that center center pinion there, so I don't uh, inadvertently press down on that. So I'll use this cover here to uh, help me. So. Let's look at this very closely to see what, how I'm actually going to remove that uh, the movement. And I see I've got a couple of screws here. As I said before, that screw right there is probably the one that removes the uh, the winding mechanism or the crown and stem. So you don't pull the stem out on these movements because they're uh, they're in place, and uh, I should see if I can take the power down on it first which would mean there's a little small lever right there that you could probably use to take the power down again it's just a little bit of a guessing game here for this because it's a European movement but if I see that going ticking like that when I turn this then perhaps when I push it out of the way the, uh, the power comes down on the movement I'm not sure Absolutely sure. Yeah, that's how it works. I just have to, and because this movement is so frigging small, I told someone else before that I wasn't interested in working on ladies' watches because they're way too small. And then uh, this friend of mine said, Hey, I've got this pocket watch I'd love you to work on. And I thought, Oh, okay, send me some photos. So he sent me a photo of the pocket watch, and I said, oh, that's a nice watch. It looked like it was about a size 16, um, and I was so far off from that. So it uh, turned out to be the world's smallest pocket watch. Thank you very much. So this seems to be letting go of the power, which is nice. I very carefully take my, my thumb away here. So I just hold this, hold the uh, crown, hold the crown while I push this small lever here, um, and then uh, deal with it that way. One thing I do want to do before I get too deep into this pocket watch is take some photos for reassembly purposes, just to make sure that I don't have an issue when I reassemble this pocket watch. And uh, decided to put the pocket watch on this very small watch holding cone here and only because I don't want to, the center wheels pushing down and I've got to be mindful of the uh, possibility of that center wheel um, the pinion on the end bending and that's where the minute hand hangs on it's so 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 small so so let me see if I can uh, take the stem out of this watch Again, the screwdrivers need to be smaller, too, for this watch. So, just to my friend Phil, who sent this to me to do some work on. Um, I still like you, Phil, but, man, why did you do this to me? Why did you do this to me, Phil? There we go. That's the stem coming out. So, I'm glad I was right. And... Now I actually have to figure out how the uh, movement comes out of its case. So it looks like it's sitting in there. Maybe it's just held in by the stem. So I'm going to play with this for a second and then come back. So it does look like there's two screws in there that might loosen the uh, movement from this case. One screw is on the inside over here 
Um, there's a screw over here, but I believe that screw is for the um, the uh, bridge that holds the escapement on underneath underneath here. So I don't think this that screw will do anything for me. So I think I'll just work on uh, work on this screw right there to see if I can uh, remove the case using that one. All right, let's call this success as I've got the uh, movement out of the case. And there seemed to be a stud right here that's part of the case itself that fits into a little, little groove in the bo bo bottom of the case. And that's how that is taken out. And then the face just fell right off this watch. So there is a, a face here that looks like it's there's no... There's no dial feet on there of any type that would stick on, so the face just sticks on. So the face fell off. Um, that's the um, the dial side of the watch, uh, and the face just fell off. And then, and uh, including the uh, dial washer here that goes on top there. So let's just put that over by the hands and the the hour wheel comes off as well and then the minute wheel should just lift right up as well and what do I got here what else do I have here so I've got the cannon pinion here that I've got to remove and of course with my luck it's a smooth cannon pinion which are way more difficult to remove than the ones that are uh, that have uh, cannon pinions that uh, have a little groove in them so these are a bit of a pain um, and I've just got to watch to see if there's any washers or anything else in there that will cause an issue and I'm also going to look at the winding mechanism that looks like it's got a little bit of corrosion in there so see if I can uh, deal with that and then do some more work on this watch I think that's I'm going to move the camera a bit too because it's sort of blocking the light a bit Now I'm going to uh, strip the bridge down a bit. First I've got to take the face and move it out of the way a little bit. And then uh, get rid of some, clean up my area. You've got to clean up your area or you're going to fumble over stuff. So and This is the uh, first time I've actually used my new, uh, my new mini, mini watchmaker's uh, desk that uh, I have. So. So I could probably put this watch now in a movement holder. So instead of having it there, so give it a little bit of stability. And uh, I want to remove that balance um, pretty fast, so I don't uh, you know, less possibility of fouling the balance if you get it out of the way. So just to make sure the watch is nicely into the movement holder here. I don't have any issues. I put it in nicely, not too tight, but tight enough, as they say. And then uh, clean some more stuff up out of the way. You get rid of that 16, size 16. There we go. So that should be good. Just examining the movement again, just to see what kind of what I got here, as they say. I don't want to uh, dive in without the uh, right equipment. And also the screwdriver sizes are important here because you, you can strip a watch if you uh, use the wrong screwdriver. So here I've got the balance and I'm going to loosen the screw for the balance. And as I've said a number of times when you're working on removing screws, um, you can wait till it clicks and then you pretty much know that it's out of out of the socket uh, this balance here I want to also ensure that I uh, when I rest it I don't want to stretch the uh, the hairspring at all on this so there's some danger of that happening uh, anyway be very very careful when you're working on the balance here also don't want to uh, 
foul the pivots at all. So we'll see what happens here. I may kill my friend for giving me this watch to work on because it's not an easy one. It's a, uh, actually a very difficult one because of its size. Plus it's not North American and I'm used to using used to working on North American pocket watches. This one here is giving me fun to get the uh, balance balance bridge off. Probably hasn't been removed in a hundred years. What I really want to avoid here is for some reason this bridge falling down. Because if it falls the hairspring stretches and then I've got no chance of running this thing again. Doesn't want to seem to come out. It's a bit. There we go. Now, I've got to grab my balance tack and put that on really carefully. So I got to—I didn't have it on the workbench, which is kind of stupid. But let me just rest this down so I don't accidentally, inadvertently, uh, s screw that up. So let me just grab my balance tack here, so I can rest it from the tack without a problem. Again, I'm doing like miniature work here, so. So, Phil, although I love you, I could kill you for sending me this watch. Alright, it's on the tack. It's so darn small it doesn't even want to be on the tack. Um, <clears throat> I may turn this around and just rest it. But again, I'm just really cautious about, about uh, fouling the, um, the hairspring on this. Because finding another hairspring for this watch would be probably impossible. So that's uh, quite the job. But if I can turn that around... I will. So let me just. Grab this for a second and. Rest it down on the ground here. So you really got to be careful of this. Because they do not want to foul the hairspring. Even turning this around could be very tricky here. All right, there I got it on its back. Thank God. And then I got to get it the hell out of the way. All right, there we go. So now that balance uh, and the hairspring are gone. And I can uh, disassemble the all the uh, work, the uh, main bridge here and all the um, stuff I got here so we have a look at the way this is put together it's a micro work here so I think that the um, I think I'll remove the I'm just trying to figure out which direction I want to go in usually you work from the top wheels down 
Um, so I might as well do that. We're just seeing how these are meshed together. And I just want to make sure that I don't leave a problem. This is the um, winding work, so I'll just wind this screw in a bit so I don't lose it. And I do have a... I've often, sometimes on these watches, because they're so small, I, I, I basically clean the um, this area here with uh, lighter fluid and uh, like the old days and don't mess with disassembly of all that uh, for fear of losing a part um, perhaps that's not the greatest thing but so I've got movement here on the escapement so which is nice and it's got a uh, it's not your, your traditional escapement uh, as the um, it's a old English lever escapement, I think. Again, everybody gonna call me up and correct me when I'm when they say, "Yeah, you don't know anything about pocket watches." This thing seems to still have some energy left in it as I move it around. I've got another movement holder coming in the mail. Uh, this one here is kind of your aluminum movement holders that are. I don't know. don't really like them. I like the old ones. The old style movement holders. They're much better. Just trying to get the energy out here. and I just don't do not want this to all of a sudden spin out on me. So. And again, when I take this stuff off, I'm going to take photos of this just to make sure I, I may take a photo of the corner there because I uh, it looks kind of weird the way this is put together. Mm -mm -mm. I'm going to have to take a week off just to relax after this. Just put your screwdriver underneath and then you just wedge it up like that and then you should be able to lift this up. Just bridge up. And that fell out of place there. Let me look at the back end of this here. Okay. It's a strange arrangement. But that's how it is, how it works. And also what I do is I match the screws because sometimes in these watches the screw the plate the screws are actually uh, different so I'm multiple picture boy this morning because I again I want to be able to put the puzzle back together again and then after I've cleaned it looks like it's got a hundred years of dirt in there I, think I need to adjust my bench everything's rolling towards me This is interesting. This wheel goes underneath the other wheel. But then this wheel looks like it's just sitting on there, but it's on there pretty tight. I'm going to wedge a screwdriver in here and just see if I can, if I twist a bit, is that going to come up? Maybe not. I do not want to force the parts on this. This is an interesting bird, as they say. I think I'll remove the... Uh, I might have to remove the cannon pinion before I start jumping into this here. There's a center wheel here. Sometimes on these watches as well, the cannon pinion is like so difficult to take off. And if you bend the cannon pinion at all, um, you're, you're in a world of hurt. You'll never be able to put that watch back together again. So. And you gotta hunt for cannon pinions, so you have to really be careful. I know hauling the cannon pinion up from the you don't want to break a tooth on the cannon pinion either, so 
I do have a cannon pinion removal tool. I may wash the watch with the cannon pinion intact again. I'm breaking all kinds of watch rules here, so. Uh, but it is vintage and I am afraid. Which is good. Always be afraid. Be very, very afraid. Yeah, this looks like it's been in place for a million years. Yeah, let me see if I can... Uh, there's a remote possibility of me removing that cannon pinion with my tool. I will. So let's go get that tool and see if I can do that. See if that'll work. Alright, this is a cannon pinion removal tool, which I've had success with over the years. You just have to watch that I don't foul it with the other things that are part of this watch here. There's a post there that I want to make sure that I avoid. It did not work. It grabs the cannon pinion and goes straight up, but uh, if the cannon pinion's on fairly tight, then you could have other issues. Yeah, that's not working. So this is going to be a challenge. So I have to determine whether I want to take that cannon pinion off or not. Given that the source of the cannon pinions for eight watches from the 1800s is pretty rare. So you want to, what you want to do is get this watch functioning perfectly, but not mess with things that you can't deal with. So this is, uh, I, deal, I normally deal with North American uh, pocket watches and not uh, pocket watches that are from Europe. I'm just being nice to this friend of mine. So just looking to see where all the plates are here. It's a tricky, tricky, tricky. Yeah, this this here should come up and off, but it seems to be stuck on there. Not sure. It's an odd arrangement. I'm going to get in really close with my magnifying glass and have a look at that and see what I can do. Alright, I've looked at the um, this gear here that's sitting on top of the... You know, between the wheel here and the other wheel. and It's a ratchet for the um, mainspring. But it's, I don't know if it's possible to, to remove the darn thing. Because it's, uh, seems like it's soldered on or something. But I do have to get at the jewels to clean those, so it's, it's a, it's a must. And attacking the cannon pinion was a waste of time because it didn't want to move. So, I hate wasting my time. This movement holder sucks too. It sucks because it's the wrong movement holder. I need a movement holder that's a bit more sturdy. To grab this, I just have to make sure I gr where it grabs on the edge of the uh, movement. I don't, I'm not fouling it at all. I noticed here there's a case screw right here that rotates, so that's one of the case screws. And there's doesn't and there's a, a peg here that sort of kind of works with the case screw, I guess. So it's uh, 
I'm going to move my camera a little bit here so I can get a better shot. It's tough work, man. Again, going to kill you, Phil. Going to kill you. i to adjust the legs on this as well so things just don't keep rolling down. Let's see, in and out, in and out. Let me lower the back legs. See if that. This bridge is responsible for the second center wheel and the third wheel. Just going to kind of lift it up and out of the way. Again, I think I'll take another picture. God, I hate when these bridges hang on to the little hole they're supposed to be in, right? Just let go. Jeez. Jeez. Jeez Louise. I wish I could take the cannon pinion off, but you know I'm going to get shit from my friends online because uh, they're going to wonder how the hell I can clean this watch without removing the cannon pinion. I want to just lift this straight up, but I think it's I think I need to move the bridge here. So let me get another photo in here because I know I'm going to have fun putting this back together again. plan was to send Phil the video and just so he knows how frustrating it is to work on these small watches. I think he I think he duped me. The reason I said that is that he sent me a picture of this watch and it looked huge. And so I said, oh yeah, okay, that's just it's a European watch, but it's not like two millimeters wide. And I was like, yeah, okay, I can work on that. And then uh, the thing arrived and it weighed nothing. I was like, okay, what's going on here? This watch weighs nothing. So what I'm hoping for when I remove this is there's no crazy springs in here that I have to deal with. Because uh, the world of crazy springs is could screw me. You go pating and then you're done. Just lift that up like so. It should come right up without a problem. It is lifting. It's being a bit a bit of a pain, but it's still lifting, so just grab that as a as a unit. Turn that around nice and easy. Have a look at what that is. Okay, let's see the way that goes in. And again, another photo, because this is going to be nasty to put back together again. Another photo. These photos are absolutely essential. If you're doing any watch repair, make sure you meticulously photograph everything as you remove it, especially when you don't understand this particular movement. It's um, necessary. Yeah, this is, uh, looks like this is holding this down here, so I'd have to remove this and this. These two screws here. I'm going to take a close-up of this little area here for reassembly. Alright, trying to get my fingers out of the way. So I flipped it around and the uh, ratchets and the, uh, the works basically came out of here is fine. And I was able to slide the mainspring barrel out, which is also fine. And it's got one of these, if you look at the other side here, there's a device here that prevents it from using the stronger part of the of the spring and the weaker part of the spring. Um, and it's, I can't remember the name of it, but it's pretty cool. It's a uh, it's, I think it's a European invention because you don't see those in American pocket watches. 
So I've got the majority of this thing out here, so I'm going to just sneak that. Again, I'm really worried about the cannon pinion here, and I'm going to sneak the uh, these bridges out and then see if I can remove the gears because I want to get at those jewels and the jewel holes because that's what you need to do to clean this thing properly. Uh, fun in the sun, man. Fun in the sun. I notice when you're removing the plates too, you don't want to push them from the back because they'll push back on the on the pivot of the um, wheel, and you could end up splitting that. So you don't want that to happen. Just trying to wedge these things out here. Which is, uh, these are the these individual bridges are are actually nice because you don't have to worry about aligning 15 pivots <laughs> so let's keep these keep these guys together so I can find them later and I definitely want to clean the uh, clean the uh, escapement because it will have like I said before a hundred years of dirt on it which is uh, not good uh, thing is too freaking small. Sorry about all the whining, I apologize. I'm sure you guys out there have worked on watches that are a lot smaller than this, but it's a, not a watch where you can actually go out and buy the parts for it. And that's what I'm concerned with. So I know I had another pocket watch I worked on a while ago that was from leased from the 1800s and it was a uh, it was so friggin' small. I said, we can pick this up with my Rodico. So you don't want to mess with the part. And this may or may not come out. I'm not sure. Yeah, it slided out nicely. So, put the wheel down there. Put that wheel down there. I'm picking this stuff up with my Rodico because I. I could pick it up with my tweezers without a problem, but these ones here, but when in doubt, Rodico it out. So there we go. That's disassembled. I haven't taken off the cannon pinion and the center wheel, and I'll get all pe sort of people writing me back and going blah, 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 blah. But my job here is to get the watch working again and to clean it. I know if I use lighter fluid, I'll be able to get inside of all that stuff and then leave it adequate time to dry. And I really want to clean out the uh, the jewels and the pivots and get this thing working properly. So it's um, so here we go. I could try grabbing that cannon pinion with a pair of tweezers and pulling straight up and see what success I get, but I doubt if it's going to work. See, it's not working. The other thing I could do is put my uh, screwdriver blade on the bottom of the, uh, like right inside, right underneath the uh, cannon pinion and see if I can wedge it up. But again, I don't want to break the teeth on the cannon pinion because that's, again, another, I've learned over the years not to fart with things if you don't need to. And this is, uh, again, my friend said here, See what you can do is what he said. Uh, it's a yeah, that's that's way too delicate. I'd want to get that the um, hand remover under, underneath there. So I'd want to get the hand removers underneath there and then pull upward. But I've also done in the past been able to punch it down. But I've done that with my own watches where I'm not as concerned with it. So. In this case, I'm going to leave it the way it is. Uh, you don't have to. You don't have to. You don't oil a cannon pinion anyway, because it's a mechanical tightness. So when you uh, wash this off, it'll get rid of all the lube around there and or the uh, corrosion around there. So that's what I want to do. And I'll just rinse that in lighter fluid and then 
Good as gold, Jerry. Good as gold. I'll make sure the pivots are good and I'll get inside that that wheel with my brush to get rid of that. And I've got a, uh, uh, I believe I've got a capsule or something right here that I've got to deal with. Oh, uh, right there. I've got a capsule. I've got a cap right here and the jewels on the bottom and that's that's for the uh, the balance. So I want to make sure that's clean as well. So I'll also have a look at all the jewels under my my um, under my stereo microscope and make sure I don't have any problems uh, with that. So for now, I think that's basically it. I may make a video later on and as I challenge myself to remove this cannon cannon pinion, and I can probably take away some of these parts here and clean those. I've found that when you get in there with your lighter fluid and stuff, it, it works just as good sometimes. And you don't want to lose the springs. It's things you don't want to lose. So it's it's uh, going to be iffy whether I do that or not. So, But that's enough for now. This is the uh, Victorian era, probably 1800 and something pocket watch. That's stripped down right now, so I'm going to clean it. Um, clean it and uh, peg out the jewels. So that's what I do is I'll rinse it in uh, lighter fluid. And then I've got to peg out the uh, holes that are here, the part of the jewels, take off the cap on that, clean the cap, uh, clean the jewel, uh, and then see if I can attack this uh, mainspring here at all um, and disassemble it. I'll have a look at that too because it's pretty old and probably needs some work. So anyway, thanks for watching the video and I'm going to send a copy of this to Phil just so I can see the, uh, the how far I've gone on this video so far.